Excuse the technical difficulties. Uh, go away. Right. Okay, I'm trying I'm really trying to make this work. We'll see how the sound works. That's going to have to be near enough. Well, I told myself I'd do this um, every day for a year. <laughs> oh, not every day, every week for a year. And um, yeah, if I get it 10 milliseconds closer every time, then in a year, maybe the sound will be synced up. In the meantime, uh, yeah, I've got better things to do. Okay. Clearing a bit of space on the pallet. Oh, let's just clean it off completely. I can talk you through the pallet I use. Now, interesting little setup today. I have a lit candle. A lit candle. Uh, a book about the history of art on top of a book about the British Empire. Make of that what you will, as it burns down during the evening. Um, it's not my job to interpret this for you. I'd make your own mind up. That was me thinking I was all prepared. A mess. Stay in there. Good. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to try and keep this quite simple tonight. And um, am I in? Am I in? Oh, crouch. There we are. <laughs> My plan is to uh, investigate what we call visual colour and get my challenge. Now, visual colour is different to local colour. Is that why you that? Probably, yes, no. Good. Oh, every time the technology promises to work, and every time I spend hours mucking about with it, and then I'm, I haven't got, I haven't got my stuff sorted out. Local colour is the, is the name you'd give to a colour. So, you know, if you've got um, a lemon, you'd say it was yellow. If you've got an orange, you'd say it was orange, obviously. 
um, but in different lighting conditions those colours become different because the overall context of the colour changes you see different colours but you still your brain computes that it's looking at a lemon which is yellow but the actual colours as they appear to you may be very different um, which is always a bit of fun to muck about with so I'm going to spoil myself today and use some good white <laughs> so I've been using the cheap stuff and actually it's a false economy I'm going to stop doing that nice big blob of white this I'm going to use. Let's see, there may be a few big impasto marks at the end. I've got some yellow ochre on there, but I might need some more in a bit. Oh, everyone's turning up. Hello Matthew. Hi Michaela. Hello Claire. What a nice night in. Let's have a bit more of that. Thank you. Um, Managed not to cover myself in paint quite yet. Red. Candlelight has quite a bit of red in it. It's quite orange. So we've got an orange cast where the candlelight is. The other thing, obviously, I can't make uh, paint that glows like a candle glows. So I've got to accentuate the unglowiness of the other bits. green at that end. Bit of Viridian. I have a feeling I'm going to be using some of this. Hmm. Great big wad of ultramarine, which is here. I have some more of this somewhere. I think I've got a tin of it. Again, that's also very un-orange. I'll keep this handy, so I think I'm going to need some more of that. I'm going to put some alizarin out as well, which is my cool red, if you like. Okay. So, again, first things first, a bit of drawing, get the basics in. Yeah, it's a nice short brush, I'll use that. I've got some... Uh, raw umber there and chuck a little bit of ultramarine in it put that out front. I'm going to be looking for the very specific dark areas I could change the format but actually I quite like this so I could put my triangle in first yeah, where I'm sitting, you've got a slightly different view from over here, but the bottom of the book is uh, pretty much in line with the candlestick. So I'm going to put that candlestick I like, I like here. That's the line that's going on. And I think I might put the flame at this height. That seems like a good place for that flame to sit, but then there's a big empty space there, so now we'll be moving that up. Probably about to here. The level of the books. The level of the books. Let's put that about there. Feels like a good place for the books. So my triangle. I'm going that direction. It might just get beyond. Steeper than that. So maybe my candle flames around there somewhere. Mm. 
So if I'm looking at this, I can go across to that corner, or I've got the centre of the line of the book, that book, and it meets down here, which is just a jot below. I think it's travelling this direction, so it's going to be up there somewhere. triangle shape. That's going to put the other side of that book miles away. Maybe I don't need both pages. Let's see. Let's, we could take the distance to the middle of the book, compare it to the height of the candlestick. Make the candlestick that high, that's the length of the middle of the book. Put that there. That would be the front of the book, that would be the back, that's pretty much what I figured out. Hmm. Right across, and then down. shadow over there. That's that, that's about there. It's going to come right off the page. What do we think about that, about that position, that book? Shadow shapes. There's a shadow shape roughly there. There's a big shadow shape under that. And down there. I have actually got extra light falling on this. If it was just candlelight, you'll be able to see a thing with the camera. Yeah. Yeah, that's roughly the shape. Candlestick will come out here. Just across like that. There. That's the kind of shape it's in. going to get shorter as the evening goes on so I'm not going to fuss too much about that and also I'm not going to try I'm not going to be too fussy about details here the most important thing the thing that's really going to do the job is color so there's the back of that stand thing it's on what about the front do slopes off slightly. A bit like that. Yeah. So I move it over. I'm not entirely happy with that composition. So I'll do a little bit of shifting. Just a little bit. Just move things around a bit. I want that candle flame to be lower down. It'll move down anyway. By the time I do it it'll be down here. So I'm comfortable with that. Maybe it needs to move across though. No, that's a good place and I want the glow. So yeah, that's another thing I haven't really taken into account is that glow, which is gonna be all in this shape here. Yeah, that sums it up quite nicely, doesn't it? All right, now we're back on track. Plan A, resume. 
Okay. I hope you can see the image all right. It's not too dark. The light will do the job on that anyway. Hmm. Taking the excess paint off there. Not going to need too much of it. Um, okay, now I was talking about local colour before. For the local colour of that cloth behind, I know it's green, but it just doesn't appear green at all. But except in the shadows. In the shadows, there's that, you know, when it's very dark and your eyes seeing all sorts of colours, almost like a sparkly noise, um, because you the little cells are firing but they don't quite know what the information is so um, that's the sort of colour I want to paint which is quite peculiar and I'm wondering whether to put in neutral and then work in the stronger colours on top I think I'll do that All right this is last week's raw ember I'm using here so uh, that's helpful uh, these my brushes have disappeared as well. How happened to them? Definitely had more than this. Anyway. Yeah, let's get that out here. Mmm, gooey. Right, try and get the clean paint off, leave the skin behind as best I can. Something delicious, and yeah, blue, which just neutralizes the amber. I won't use all of it. And that's quite a soft black. You can probably see it better than I can. I'm dealing with all the reflective color here. A reflective light that it was obscuring the colour, what I was trying to say. Um, but you at home have the benefit of a polarising filter on the front of the camera. Um, blue up. I could put a good chunk of blue into that. That's pretty much my black. There's a darker black to be had. I'm going to water this, uh, well, water it. I'm going to thin it down. There's still tons of raw umber on this brush. There we go. So I'm going to put on quite a thin version because I know I'm going to want to put quite a bit of colour on top of this. Yeah, that do it. Like that, a bit more there. Um, there's a whole chunk up there. He needs a little bit of artistic licensing. Shift that across a bit. Some nice neutral colours. Here. Sort of a shadow above. So all the lights coming from the middle and creating shadows around it, which is quite interesting. A uh, similar kind of thing going on here. I'm going to get some of that raw amber back. I'm going to keep it thin. I'm going to add some red into it. I'll get all the darks in, and then any colours afterwards will be lightening, and I can choose how much I lighten it um, and where I want to lighten it, but I don't want it to look brighter, I can use a complementary colour to the 
the colour of the uh, the shadows. Okay, I'm going to check this on really quick. So it's all along there. That's probably too much. The sun here. in that ground layer. Yeah, there'll be some purples and things to go on top, but first things first. I'll dab a yellow ochre as well. Put on the red. So it's still quite neutral. It can still get much warmer, but it's lighter than the one on top. What the hell happened there? That looks utterly different on the palette to how it does on the canvas. Okay, it's like that, is it? <laughs> okay, not being too fussy about the drawing. I keep reminding myself, and I keep forgetting. See the different candles, one from the light which is illuminating me and also spilling onto there. Um, and there's another shadow which is from the candle, so I'm going to concentrate on the candle one. Okay, I hold on that big shadow in there. It's going to be darker. This, where is that? Yes, that is over to one side. We're really going to try and make these lights sing. There's a shadow. That's where it comes out of that blueness. It goes slightly orangey, just on that edge. I'm going to use that. Hopefully, it'll be useful. green and I'm going to need that orangey yellow that goes on top. So how am I going to do this? I think I'll start with the more neutral green, the softer green. I'll put some light in. I'm just, I'm just chucking the colour in now. That's not dark enough. Let's put some blue in it. Just 
building colour. It's really light. But I know I can go so much lighter than this, so do I trust it? Do I trust how light that is? Yeah, maybe. No, no I don't. <laughs> Green now. It's a bit more like it. There we go. Okay. orange around the middle. Here it goes green again. Once these colours are in, yeah okay, I'm going to need a lighter, more orangey one. I'm going to use some yellow ochre. Should lighten it too before these shadows here. Oh, what's that? Handbrush dew. Hey, there's a fleck of paint on there. Oh, there's a bit. Oh, no, actually, it's underneath there. Yeah, just setting the mood really. Just green around the edges. It's definitely a warmer green in there on that side. There's a warmer green here. I'll try and bring that out. And that cooler green. Yeah, that's definitely much better. Cooler green is just for the shadow. There's a lighter one there. I might try and do a little bit of the pontillism trick of taking the constituent parts of a colour and uh, applying them as individual marks. Now, is there anywhere else yet? It's also in here. I'll put some in there. We're probably going to need a bit in there. That won't hurt. Let's put a bit in there. And in here. Oh, I like that. Simple blocks of colour, but letting them do their job. It's extra dark to go in, but that can come later. Okay, anything else? A little lump, dry. No, dried paper anyway. Sometimes you get a little lump of dried paint. You just chase it all around the canvas, trying to get it off. Spoiling every mark you've made in the process. Okay. Right, we're going to need a lighter and warmer again, so I'm going to take some more yellow ochre. I think I'm doing all this with brush mixes. I've got the knife out and I barely used it. Okay, we'll lighten that ever so slightly. Or will we? Yeah, just a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin. Again, that's my cool red. Yeah, that's the kind of thing. Still got to darken this down slightly, I think. So I can do that afterwards. Yeah, let's just get that colour in. That's as bright as it's going to be on that edge. I might get paler even. At least more neutral. Yes, that's, that's definitely yellowy under there. Okay, I'm starting to see it now. I think I had to really look for it. Definitely behind 
there. And it drops off a bit. to look rather odd now isn't it but hopefully that's clear to everyone what's happening just going to use the brush mix mix it up with the green that's left and just take that out to the edge Put the rest of it is blocked in Very subtle little differences. Yeah. That's the soft edge, that's the hard edge on that side. That's why it comes all the way up to the Let's get that done. It's hard to see from this this camera view, but compare how light that page is, which as local colour I know to be white, and I'm looking at it and it looks white because I'm not taking uh, account of the context. But compared to how bright that candle flame is, and and the distance between that candle flame being the brightest colour, the lightest as well, down to that shadow being the darkest. It's very hard to sort of pitch that, but it's pretty much a mid-grey. Now if I take this, you know, this grey colour here, that black, and treat that as black, and take a piece of white, and I'll put the white there, and I want a grey colour that sits halfway in between. So I'll add black to that. I'll add even more to it, I think. Still, still lighter than the halfway point, and add a bit more. And I'm also going to warm it up. I'll borrow some of that orange I mixed earlier. I'll pop a little bit of red in there. I'm being really brave with the Scarlet Lake. Can't get away with adding too much. And a little bit of yellow ochre. Actually, quite a lump of yellow ochre, I think. Now that is going to be my white, which looks very bizarre. I'm going to put little sparkles in it later, which you will see makes sense, hopefully. Hang on. Let's get some of that colour and put it on to see what it does. It needs to be a lot pinker. I need some alizarin. Make a little sub mix by the side, see how that looks. Yeah, it's a bit more like it. Uh, it looks all, that looks white to me now. You know what's going on. I'll put a bit more pink in there. We can add some more later on there. Let's get that. Let's get that 
increase that. My brain knows where the corner of the, the page is, even though I, you can barely see it visually. Your brain figures it out. And we become a slave to that particular... Uh, make a bluer version here. Yeah. That particular perception, even though visually it's not important. Is the side of the, the white page. Okay, if I go back to my. Can I make some even darker one? That would be really cheeky and put even more red in it. Maybe put some of that text in. up in what I think it looks like. some text on our pages. Okay, we're going even darker for those pictures. Still keep that red in there, I think that works well. on the page. Over here, same kind of thing. Oh, is that dark or else can I use that? No, it's actually lighter there. Down here. Oh, that's a bit more like it for there. Anywhere in the candlestick? Yeah, probably a bit there. There's probably some here. Bit of the side, bit of the back. No, it's too dark. Probably a bit there. I'm trusting my previous drawing here, which otherwise I wouldn't be entirely convinced of. No, that was wrong. Oh, you know what? That's just the right colour for the candlestick. It's sort of bluish. So no, the, the candle, not the candlestick. A little warning against trying to paint and talk at the same time. It's harder than you'd think. I'm definitely going to make that dark. 
stuff at the bottom. So while these colours seem to relate together, I can steer them in different directions and make that blue up there, which will accentuate the pink. The other side. Yeah, it seems to be a bit better. Hmm. Is that some? No, it's still quite blue. I don't think there's a bluer mix, and do I need any bluer in there? I do I? Let's see, that's too steep. So I might be moving where the bottom of that book is. I said there'd be some. Uh, oh, it's going to be pinker. Yeah, all sorts of discoveries being made right now. We can see that image turning up there already. And now um, I've no idea how long I've been painting for. Oh, well, about 40 minutes. All uh, right, one more brush, and we'll get. I don't know what I'm holding that. We should use it. Yeah, we'll get some of that brown colour on. Was it the right colour for that? No, that was darker. So red or lighter. So that's local colour right there. I will make changes to it as I go along. The spine of the book is going to look quite different. I'm going to put green into it. Yes, put green in your red. That's too green. <laughs> see where that colour is because it's shining too much. Hopefully you're not having that problem again because of polarising filters. Hooray. The, um, the pub's a bit noisy tonight because uh, I think Simmons and Samson are sponsoring the bear baiting. Which is a Somerset tradition, you know, for people who don't understand the countryside, you know, want to ban that kind of thing, but you know, they think it's important to keep the traditions alive. I have no opinion on it whatsoever. Okay, before I get myself in trouble. Um, I'm going to introduce some stronger colour in there. I can see a really strong blue in there, so I'm going to drop that in. Pull that off the edge, I like that blue there. Alright, put some blue in here. That's definitely some blue in there. So having that ground dark colour there at the beginning is useful. Uh, hmm, it actually looks a bit spooky here. I'll darken that down around the edges. There's a bit. I and mean, it's definitely, it's going to have to seem darker behind the candle flame because that's just the effect it has. Okay, right. So 
this point there's some other things to be done. Well, One is to make up sort of a peachy light colour. I'm actually going to use some a little bit of that lemon yellow. It's incredibly strong. Tiny bit of um, crimson lake, and that's all just gone pink. So a whole lump of yellow, lemon yellow now, and a whole lump of white. There we are. Now that's my candle flame right there. Nothing else is remotely close to being that bright. So I can make a little submix. I can pick up that was my white. So I can pick up some of that and I can drop some candle flame colour mixed in with that into these little areas there. Just where it's brighter. Just little lumps, just to express the feeling of the light. All that margin there. Um, every time I go back and mix it, I'll be carrying a little bit of the darker paint back. So I'll do the very brightest bits first. Express the slightly cockled nature of the pages of that book if it just come across as wonky brushwork. Let's see, there's a little bit of light there. Okay, and it's pinker over there, so I'm going to take a little bit of red, mix it in that, darken it down, bring some of that in here. There's also a little bit. And there, here, right in the centre, there's little bits of this pink getting in here. The highlights in that fabric. Little touches of it. Let's go back to the pages of the book just to, if necessary. side of the page, make more of the shadow and the crease. Okay, now oh, yeah. there's a bit here. There's sort of a crease here. This needs to be fatter paint now, much fatter paint. So I'm going to take a whole lump of that, a whole lump of this. I'm going to make it redder as well. I'm going to introduce this pink into these areas of warmth in here. There's some in there. There's quite a few in there. The yellow is already in there and the green. I just want to get some of the flickering of the light as well. So there isn't so much there. Yeah. Yeah. A good bit, sort of an edge on that. Make it yellow or two. Let's try a yellow or one. Where else is it yellow? In there, all the way across in here. That's 
a lovely flicker to it too. All around the leaf and that. Really. Sort of around the flame. No, that's different. Pinker and darker. Oh, yeah. Where else can I see that pink? It's in here. No, it's all in there. That's good. This pinkness sort of represents the travelling light. There will also be something to make more of these shadows. This is quite a different style for me. Now let's work all this in a bit now. Top. Well, it's quite it's still light, but it's definitely cooler. A little bit of that in there as well. And in here, and in there, it's a reflected light. You can also see it in there. Yeah. Of that later on, but for the moment, I'll try and keep it looking spontaneous as much as I can. Is that too light? I reckon I'll get away with it. We haven't done the really darks and haven't done the really nights. They'll all come all in good time. It's lighter than the candle there. A bit more orange. Okay, that's ten o'clock. Got the basic shape in. Okay, I'm going to go for a much 
green now. Really strong green. Let's see how much I can do with that colour there. Not too dark. So these shadows are still going to be light. We should make that the red that's in there vibrate a bit. There's a few bits of sort of strong greeny shadow a bit in there. up from a different source as is that and that and that and just for the sake of being oh there we are doing the ungreen thing let's take your lump of blue can see there's something there too yeah it needs that it probably needs some there it's not that dark need some here yes that is darker I like the blue there that extra intensity of colour works very well Shape of that page, so yeah, that should really, really flow. That's under there as well. No, that's not dark enough, though. Okay, back to here. Any other shadows? We've got that blue in. That has a bit. Okay, I'm going to have a break in a sec. It's definitely dark around the edges. I see I'm being too fussy now. Let's make those marks a bit more dancing. And there, and there. And there. Last bit, get some of the heavy darks. So I'll just check that contrast is good. I'm going with the brown, adding a bit of the green into it. Just checking we've got a dark contrast against that blue there. Yeah. That works. Where else that goes? A bit in there. There's quite a bit in here. green it comes back in there as well that's going to get even darker so I'll just put this in as a placeholder where else this goes yeah do a bit of a job up there that's nice Okay. Right, we're going to have a little break. We'll come back and finish this off and put that candle flame in, and it hopefully will look like the flame is lit. If it's bright enough. Oh, hi, Jason. Before I go, I'm going to try and put the top of that candle in. 
that is the brightest I can get with the paint. So I need something orange. That's probably way too much red to ever get enough orange. So a whole lump of yellow ochre. Okay. okay. That's quite a lot darker, that's good. I really do need to carry it down. That's good. And it's going to be even lighter on the top. I don't want a bit of that, just for the top edge. So you can see how there's a glow waiting to come, and that's nowhere close to the glow of the actual candle that can arrive. You know what, I'm just going to work through, let's get this done in half an hour. of that light round and about where we can get it in. Definitely a bit in there. How's that looking? Too bad. Let me go back to that grey. I'm going to bring in that bit of light for here. So now it's all little harmonies of colour working together now. Uh, I'm working there as well. I can bring a bit into the shadow as well. Shadow is going to be bigger. It's quite yellow there. Red. Right. Let's go really red here. I'm just going to bring 
Put some of that out of here. It's not going to hurt. Weirdly, it's a good colour for up there as well. Do they match? That is orange. Let's get some really dense colour in there, then that's more like it. Some green on here, didn't I? Get some of that darken. Introduce some of those other colours. Get that shadow going. Yeah, definitely a lot of green in there. dark candlestick it's a small brush keeping it I still want it to be a long flat there you are hmm I'll put some oil in that make it flow can we sit up on the surface Too fussy again. There's certain elements I really want to catch though. One of them. There's edges. to the light and dark, that's all I need to do. Let's just start getting fussy or anything. The highlights will do the job afterwards anyway. Yeah, we've got that shape there. Thank you. 
have some yellow there, some other bits of shadow in here. Have I gone too soon with this? I need something red in between. Nothing in between, that's the problem. Let's try and bring that down a bit. That's a bit more like it. Yeah, I'm happy. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I'll do it. Maybe somewhere in between that. How fussy do I want to be? quite happy with the candlestick. I think I could have done that better. It's actually browner and there's blue bits on it. Let's do some light blue bits. that shadow there. Okay, I think I'm being fussy now. I think I need to leave this in a minute. Let's bring in a bit of that light underneath that. A bit on the edge. And you know what? I haven't got any yet. Purple. When in doubt, add purple. It's not going to be very strong purple. But it's there. on this on that front edge so a bit it works against the green so well as well it really makes the, the colors jump around a bit so yeah it's, it's fun turning up the color where possible Yeah, 
neutralizes it a bit around here. Okay, it's also in there. Yes, that needs a bit. What else? A bit in here? Maybe. Okay, now I am being fussy and fiddling. Let's get that candle in and then we're done. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is do the wick. I'll do that. Lovely. Now, there's a sort of brown bit at the bottom of the flame. It's quite a greyish brown, isn't it? vibration either side. Oh yeah, that pinkiness. It's really jumping out now. This is quite fun. Seeing all sorts of things I didn't know were there. Stop fiddling with that. That's fine. That purple one more time. Need some in here, I think. Yeah, so it's just a mix, and it's pretty, it's almost completely white. Clean piece of palette, that'll do. Lemon yellow, tiny bit. Tiniest bit of crimson. And keep adding yellow until it's the right. Oranginess. I don't know if that's going to work. Let's try it. No, it needs it needs something more orange in, in first, which is what I had here.
No, maybe that was all right before. So we've got a taper right. Okay, I think we've got something there. It's not orange at the bottom, it's just good picking that up. Hopefully, that looks like a lit candle flame. And um, I'm fairly satisfied with that. That could be a lot worse. Let's put in a little flash of light along here. That's in the red. And then let's have a bluish one as well. Just to acknowledge another light source. That's awful. I get a long brush. Oh well, I'm right on the verge of cooking this up, so that's, that's time to stop. Thanks very much for joining me again. I have to pick a colour to sign it with you. And um, I'm going to start eBaying these. So if uh, if anyone's got you know needs Christmas presents and for someone you really hate, um, I'm going to do knockdown prices and um, yeah, <laughs> give me a shout. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Shall I do a head-on view of it? Let's do that. Just before I finish, let's do a straight-ahead view. see how rough those marks are. I'll hopefully see some of the colours as well. I'll take them back to the palette. Super. Yeah, back next Monday, slightly more in sync, hopefully.